What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Locked on Pirates podcast today on Friday, October 22nd. I hope you all have had a phenomenal Friday as, once again, Adam Bittner, who joins us every week, will be joining us today on Friday to talk about the Pirates appear to be re-signing Yoshi Tsutsugo as well as what does the perfect Pirates offseason look like in our minds. I am, of course, your host, Ethan Smith, who does the most. You see my name down there twice. You can follow me on Twitter at MVP underscore Ethan. You can follow this podcast at Locked on Pirates on Twitter. And thank you for making Locked on Pirates your first Listen to the day every single day, even if it is in the mid-afternoon. And today's episode, of course, is brought to you by Spotify Greenroom. Spotify Greenroom is the first social audio platform that brings sports fans together. Like myself, like Adam, you could talk about college football. You could talk about baseball, basketball, football. It's all going on right now, and it's all going down on Spotify Greenroom. But with that said, let's get into today's episode. You are Locked On Pirates, your daily Pittsburgh Pirates podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everyone, and welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast today. I hope you again are all having a phenomenal Friday as I'm trying to get my name off of the screen twice as I'm talking to all of you. But Adam... How are you doing today as Mr. Adam Bittner is here once again, probably talking about something college football-wise, uh, something interesting going on this weekend with uh, the Pitt Panthers being favored over the Clemson Tigers for probably the first time in their existence. Um, but how are you today? Doing great. It's uh, it's a cloudy day here in the 412, and it's starting to feel like fall. So yeah, like you said, yeah. this is uh, this is college football weather, as I like to call it. Oh, yeah. Well, it's not cloudy down here in Savannah, and it's not feeling like fall at all. I think it's actually, let me look at my phone, 83 degrees. So, yeah, not fall weather at all. Um, but what was nice to see amidst this fall weather is I did see, I don't know if it was um, confirmed or not, but it does look like the Pittsburgh Pirates are planning on bringing back Yoshi Tsutsugo, the I guess first baseman, you want to call him. I mean, he's mainly a first baseman. I don't really want to see him in right field, but I think this is a huge, huge deal for the Pittsburgh Pirates, especially if they bring the universal DH into the factor with the CBA and everything coming this offseason. Um, so what is the impact that Yoshi Tsutsugo could have in 2022 and beyond, depending on what the deal is if they get it done? Yeah, I mean, I think we'll have to see the terms of the deal. Um, you know, uh, if I was the Pirates, I, I think I'd be probably hoping for something in the intermediate term to, to kind of make this worthwhile, maybe three to four years. Um, and, and I think that gives you the ability that, you know, if things don't work out, you don't, you're don't you not locked into this for the long run um, and, and you can kind of move on fairly quickly. Um, but you do, you know, maybe you buy down that rate a little bit by giving a few extra years. Um, so yeah, I, I think a lot of it's going to be determined on, you know, what the contract is because, um, you know, there's a chance that there's some risk here. I mean, mm -hmm. Yoshi was with several other teams before he finally, you know, was able to catch on with the pirates and catch a little bit of fire. And, um, you know, you, you don't really know what you're going to get in, in terms of, um, you know, over a full season yet, uh, quite what you have in him. So, um, yeah, I would hope that the risk that, that the pirates would be taking on and in, in, in bringing him back. Um, you know, could be balanced by the potential. And, um, you know, who knows? Maybe he could be a, a, a power source for this team that badly needs it um, for now and, and potentially a trade chip in the future. Um, it, it probably helps that he's a little bit older, um, mm -hmm. you know, that so that you kind of have a, a few more options. So, yeah, I think we'll, we'll have to see what the deal actually looks like before we can say definitively whether it's a good deal or a bad deal. But um, the one thing we do know is that they can't afford it. And, and um, you know, this would be an easy way to please the fans who suffered through um, a pretty miserable season. One, one of the highlights was Yoshi. So I think, um, you know, if it's a low risk move, then then I think it's the right thing for this team to do. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, too, is even like I brought up the universal DH idea, even if it doesn't happen, you still have Colin Moran. Maybe that could open the door to a Colin Moran trade that opens the door, though, also to having a very strong power bat as a backup or as a like utility guy. If he could play elsewhere, that's something the Pirates haven't had in a pretty long time. I mean, 
you look at Polanco, he was a very strong like uh, candidate for that kind of thing, but he was always starting in right field. But they have not had a bench power bat in a very long time. I'd say the last time was probably Pedro Alvarez when he was like kind of on the downswing of his career. Um, but the impact of power now on baseball is obvious. I mean, power wins ball games now. Look at the Astros and Red Sox series, for example, which I don't remember our exact predictions, but boy, those that series is going interestingly. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to see how it uh, shapes out tonight. Um, but the Yoshi Sutsugo thing, I agree 100%. I don't think the deal needs to be like anything ridiculous. Obviously he had just kind of like a good half a season. He didn't really get to see a whole season from him. So maybe a one or two year deal, like you said, maybe even three would be fine just to see what he can do for you. And as you mentioned, he could also be a future trade ship as well. If he continues to play well, because for all intents and purposes, he was playing well. I mean, he wasn't hitting the ball crazy. His fielding in right field when he was stuck out there wasn't great. Even at first base, not very great. But it was better than what the Pirates had been dealing with, hitting-wise and power-wise beforehand. And it realistically, he could be, if he, like, at best, he could probably be a 20 to 25 home run guy like Brian Reynolds was this year. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, the, the, the problematic part of a, a short deal is that if it actually does work out, then – your ability to bring him back and keep him in the organization could be limited. You know, if it's next off season, um, yeah. you know, if he hits 30 home runs this, this season, there's going to be a lot of teams that are, are willing to pay for that. So um, I think you, if, if you're the pirates, you want to th- kind of thread that needle in terms of, you don't want to be allocating too much money to this mm-hmm. guy who, who is really still only turned in half a season. Um, you know, but, but you want things, you want to set yourself up if, if things do work out. So, um, you know, I, I kind of remember the Jung Ho Gung deal. I believe, yeah. you know, his initial deal was um, four years and eleven million dollars. Um, you know, I, I I think that's kind of the the thing you'd be looking for here is um, he's he's still kind of an enigma, and, and you probably want to try to nail him down to something shorter. Um, but if if you can spend eleven million dollars over four years, that's a pretty good um, pretty good return on investment. And we obviously we know how the Jung Ho situation went. Um, you know, it, it looked like it was going to be a great payoff at the time. And then I think, you know, in the end, he, he really probably only made that deal break even um, given how things turned out. But I, I think you can kind of look at Yoshi through a, a similar lens of, um, you know, you, you give him a nice payday um, and and in return, you, you get some some cost effectiveness. So that's kind of what I'd be looking at is is make sure that you, you give yourselves a chance to hold on to this guy if he succeeds but kind of limit the downside if he doesn't. So you're not in the Gregory Polanco type of situation, um, you know, a year later. Yeah, of course. And the thing is too, is being careful with the team they have right now is fine. I mean, you're not like, this isn't like the pirates are a 95 win team trying to bring this guy back and say, okay, you have to be this good for us to make the playoffs or anything. There's no pressure on him at all. I mean, there is some pressure when you sign a contract to obviously fulfill said contract in terms of how you play on the field, but realistically, if you do sign into a longer term deal, like you said, even if he doesn't play that well next year, he's not like increasingly old. Like he's not like some old fart. That's like 36 years old, like Albert pool holes or something like that, you know? Um, and the thing is as well is as you mentioned, team control is like the biggest thing the pirates are doing right now. So why not lock up a guy like this? And then like later in the episode, in the next segment, probably we'll get into locking up a lot of these guys as I've been a big advocate for Brian Reynolds getting an extension um, pretty soon. And I've even heard rumblings that O'Neill Cruz could even possibly get like a little mini extension as well, just to get him locked up into the system for a while. And that pays the question though, is does Yoshi Tsutsugo pan out depending on how the deal works? Like, what are our reasonable expectations? Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, like we said, it, it depends what the contract looks like. But I think if it looks like what we'd expect it to, um, you, you know, you'd hope that he could be, you know, a, a 15, 20 home run guy minimum, um, you know, maybe not hit for a ton of average, maybe not tear the, the tear the ball up like he did in this half season. But, you know, just kind of be a reliable power threat, a productive guy who can, um, you know, a professional hitter, and and I think yeah. that's that's something that the Pirates don't have a ton of right now. And I think if you can get that kind of guy on on a reasonable deal, um, you know, it, it gives you a lot of options moving forward. 
um, you know, depending upon what type of team you have in a given season. Um, you know, maybe he doesn't fit. Maybe he's a trade chip or, or, or maybe he becomes a, a centerpiece of this franchise. It's, um, you know, the important thing is to keep getting good players in here. Um, and he's the one guy that, that there were a lot of dart throws on this team this year. And I think he's the one guy that everyone kind of wants to see back. Um, and, you know, I think he's he's earned being that one guy who mm -hmm. uh, was a dart throw who worked out for the Pirates. Oh, yeah, of course. And I think Ben Gamble can go into that as well. Um, but moving forward, before we get into our next part of uh, the episode today, I want to let you guys know about NetSuite. NetSuite, of course, they're pretty cool. You know, they have a lot of fun stuff going on over there. Slow is just right if you're on vacation, a sloth, or describing QuickBooks, more like slow books. It sucks you in and slows you down with manual processes, integration difficulties, and glitchy delays that leave you scrambling for the numbers you need. Now is the time to make the switch to NetSuite, brought to you by Oracle, the number one financial system because NetSuite gives you visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, e-commerce, and more. It's everything you need to grow all in one place. And right now, special financing is back. NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind financing program only for those who switch today. Head to NetSuite.com slash locked on right now and get special financing at NetSuite.com slash locked on. That's NetSuite slash locked on. Com. And today's episode, of course, is also brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bars on the market. Built Bar, you know, nine different unique flavors. They just recently sent me this bad boy right here. And I never thought I would really like pumpkin and chocolate together, but it's very, very good. Um, and if you want to try their nine different flavors, which range from Cherry Barcia to all kinds of other different things as well, like German chocolate, cookies and cream, you can get a mix box, which features... 18 built bars, two of each flavor. They are also very good for you, Adam. Three to five grams or three to five grams of net carbs and three to five grams of sugar, only 130 to 180 calories. And they are the sponsor of the U.S. track and field team. So when you go to Built Bar right now, if you are a new customer, use the promo code LOCK15 and you will get 15% off of your next order for the best dang protein bars on the market. Now that the Yoshi Tsutsugo thing seems to be happening, and uh, we brought this up before we started today, what are what are some things that could make this Pirates offseason perfect? Obviously, you can't make it perfect because if it was perfect. They'd have Carlos Correa and um, Corey Seager in their middle infield, and they'd have Zach Greinke, uh, Kevin Gausman, and like all these guys pitching, but what is like the ideal way the pirates can make their off season the best it can be? Yeah, I think you want to, you want to start with the extensions. You want to start inside the organization um, because you know, that's, that's where the future of your team ultimately lies. Um, and so I think you want to, um, I think you want to spend your money now with, without any obligations for the future, which, I feel like we have to keep stressing it every time we talk about yes. roster construction. There is no one signed to this team mm -hmm. um, for next season. It's it's either guys who are on, you know, making the minimum or guys who will be in arbitration, but no one has a, a you know, a long-term contract with this team. So they have the money to spend. Um, so, you know, the guys we've talked about here several times, I think Brian Reynolds, Brian Hayes, um, I'm I'm curious to see how the O'Neill Cruz situation goes, just because um, mm -hmm. that would be very aggressive, and we don't really don't see that industry wide um, mm -hmm. very often. Guys who get signed to the the major league deals before they even really get to the major leagues. I know we saw him for a couple of games this year, um, but you know he really is is still in that prospect mode. Um, you know you you very rarely see see deals like that, and when you do, I'm, I you know. Is is O'Neill Cruz that guy? Is he he yeah. that can't miss Steven Strasburg, Bryce Harper um, type of player? I you know I think there's a lot to like about him, and I think he can be a good player for the Pirates for a long time. But I don't know if he's in that mold. And and you know unless you think you can really nail him down to a you know maybe find a way to spend thirty million dollars over eight or nine years before he's you know in his getting into his thirties and his his production would be thought to drop. You know, it, it's a difficult proposition, and we've yeah. seen these these types of deals go sideways where the Pirates were aggressive. Um, Gregory Polanco, Jose Tabata, if you want to go back a, a lot further, so I I think it's 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 going to be an interesting window into how this franchise might operate. 
um, based on how they handle that O'Neill Cruz situation. Because I think there's there's risk both ways, right? If you if yeah. you bring him up next June and um, you know he tears things up, that price is going to go up, and everyone in town is going to be expecting you to sign him to an extension. Um, and it might cost 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars more than it would if you if you did it this winter. Um, mm-hmm. But there's also a chance if you do it this winter, he can he could be you could be paying a guy who you don't want for a very long time um, if, if things don't work out. So uh, I, I think it's going to be an interesting window into Ben Charrington's decision making process, how aggressive he's going to be, um, you know, what he thinks of the guys in his system. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think that's the one to watch. Um, especially in terms of how the Pirates operate in the future, because I think you can make arguments with Brian Reynolds um, specifically that that you know by the time he would be reaching free agency, he may not be he may be entering his thirties and and at a time when he's a little bit less productive. I think you could you could possibly justify not making that deal. Um, Brian Hayes is, is probably right in that in that zone in the middle. Although I'm curious for from his perspective to see if he even wants to sign with this team at all because he's been approached. We know at least once. Um, I, I think it's probably been multiple times um, mm. in, in, in the past. So um, does he want to be here? And I, I think that's an interesting question on that front. But I think I'm most fascinated by the O'Neill Cruz situation just because there's not a whole lot of examples you can look back on of, of a guy possibly getting an extension before he's played even 10 major league games. Yeah, yeah, realistically. And another guy you could even throw in that mold is Rowenzi Contreras with how he played in the minor leagues this year. Got to see a little bit of him uh, this season near the end of the year. Say he kind of does the same thing you said, obviously not with the hitting aspect, but the pitching aspect. Say he goes five and one with a 2.3 ERA, two to one, like or three or four to one strikeout rate or some wild number, like a really good whip number, really good K to nine number. Again, it's going to be one of those things. It's going to be a tough decision of saying, do you want to spend more money later for a known commodity or do you want to try to risk to spend less money and have it locked up already? And that's where I kind of get with a lot of players like Ben Gamble right now. I know he's arbitration eligible, so they'll probably handle that. But I do believe he's a free agent in 2023. So you have to kind of mold your way around these things. And Kevin Newman is another interesting one as well because he's so good defensively and he does so much for the team. His bat just wasn't there this year, but he's also an arbitration guy, I believe a free agent in 2023 as well. With everything you have going on in the system, though, with Leo Verpiguero, Nick Gonzalez, Michael Escado, Tucapita Marcano, Rodolfo Castro, Michael Chavis, Hoy Park, you have so many names that need to get time to see what you have. Does Kevin Newman fit in that mold of getting an extension as well, and do you want to pay him that money? Colin Moran, especially with the Yoshi Tutsugo thing, he's going to be up for it, I believe, pretty soon as well. I don't know all their contracts by heart, but I'm pretty sure he's going to be up for it soon. And then what we'll get into in the final part of the uh, episode today as well is you also have to find the balance between paying the talent that you want to keep here and showcasing the talent that you have in your system and on your team, as well as adding valuable veteran leadership or valuable players outside of what you're trying to do. And one of the things that I actually was like bringing up to somebody the other day about the Pirates is I said, I wouldn't be mad if they signed a bunch of veterans in two year deals, nothing more than that. And just maybe at least look somewhat competitive and then sit there and like let these guys behind them grow and learn from these guys. That way, when 2023 and 2024 come, you can offload those veteran guys for more prospects to then create another wave of prospects, as well as have all these young guys who have all this knowledge from these guys. Like, I think that's what they tried to do with a bunch of names this year. Um, Tyler Anderson being one of them, he worked out pretty well for them to get the trade and everything. But Trevor Cahill was a dud. Todd Frazier, which I haven't said Todd Frazier's name on this podcast in five months. Um, he he was a dud. Um, but I agree with everything you're saying, though. It's a lot of high risk, high reward, like realistically with this offseason for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And I mean, I'm interested to see, too, is Ben Sherrington going to splash the cash a little bit? Not like a lot, but as we've mentioned before, they have no commitments past 2021 as of right now until Yoshi Tsutsuga or some of these players resign or get moved outside of arbitration, of course. But does he splash the cash a little bit? Well, yeah. I mean, we've talked about that. I would look more toward free agency than anyone who's on this team now in, in terms of, of where you're going to spend this money, obviously with the exceptions of some of these guys that we talked about earlier. Um, these, these actual proven talents, these guys who have great pedigree. I don't put um, Kevin Newman in that ter- ter- uh, territory. 
I don't put Colin Moran in that territory. Um, you know, I, I think the only players on the on this big league team that that I would you know really be looking toward having a long term future with would be um, you know the guys we already talked about. I think some of those those other guys who are decent players, but um, whose numbers aren't really great and who probably really aren't going anywhere as major leaguers. I say let them go, and and you know maybe if you can bring them back on on some type of really cheap deal, you do it on a year by year basis. But um, certainly for the purposes of this off season, I would not commit any future dollars, um, you know, to anyone you're not trying to keep here um, for two, three, four, five years after their arbitration mm -hmm. passes. And I, I don't know that a lot of those guys fall in that territory. And I think, you know, given the team's results, I think it'd be hard to justify bringing them back too, just because are you going to keep bringing back the same guys who, who contributed to losing? Or are you going to open up those slots for um, some of these prospects who are coming up? And I think in Kevin Newman's case, um, there's just so much in that middle infield and we don't know that any of it's going to work out, but I don't think that this franchise is going to look back and, and regret letting Kevin Newman walk. If, 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 in, if in fact that's where things go, yeah. um, you know, I, I think his best case scenario um, is maybe playing as, as a bench you know, late inning defensive replacement who can, you know, maybe look look competent up there if he has to take a pinch hit late in the game. Um, but, you know, on a good team, I, I don't think there's a future for Kevin Newman. And, and um, you know, I think Colin Moran might be in the same territory of, yeah, you know, he can put up decent numbers, but is, is on a good team, I think his best spot might be a DH or, or you know, that power bat we were talking about earlier in, ter in terms of Yoshi, um, you know, a team is going to want to pay for Colin Moran's power. Um, but I don't know that the role kind of fits with what the pirates would have to pay him um, yeah. to stay in Pittsburgh. So um, yeah, I, I, I think I would, I would mostly want to, if I was a pirates fan, I'd want to see the big guys taking care of this off season. And then, you know, who knows if you get lucky and Colin Moran and Kevin Newman have great seasons, you can revisit the conversation. Um, and, and, and maybe you do want to extend those guys based mm -hmm. on what they've done, but with, based on what they've done to this point, Based considering that they're more proven commodities, I don't I don't know that they're the guys that I would want to chase this offseason. Yeah, understandable. Yeah, I can see all that. And um, before we continue this awesome conversation about all this, I want to let you guys know about betonline.ag. Betonline, of course, is the best place to do all of your sports betting during the baseball playoffs, hockey, football, and basketball season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action, as well as all the other sports I just mentioned this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Don't forget to use our promo code locked on to receive your bonus from football, basketball, baseball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. All right, so uh, we talked about kind of a lot of the stuff that we could do internally with the players that they have. And I said, does Charrington splash the cash this offseason? That's a very big question. Um, but outside of the organization, what do you think the Pirates should really be targeting? Because for me, I said starting pitching, relief pitching, backup catcher, and right fielder. Those were like the main four things I said they need to square away and they may have options in the, in the system right now, but they wouldn't be immediate options to have right away. So your thoughts on if Charrington decides to go spend a little bit of money, where should he be spending it and where should he should be putting it? Yeah, I agree with you on the pitching. I'm, I'm right there with you. I don't think any of the guys that are, um, you know, that are in the mix right now have definitely earned the right to be there no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think, you know, if, if you play things similar to this season and you, you get a couple of veteran guys and you throw them in that mix and you make them earn it, um, you know, and, 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 you know, if they don't, then, then you kind of move on and it's, you know, it, this year's payroll is, is going to be, I think, you know, mostly focused on, you know, getting getting more guys in there that are veterans that can be trade chips later if they work out. I think Tyler Tyler Anderson is is kind of the model of of what you want, and I don't think it it hurts to to bring a couple of guys on 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 small deals, one year deals, prove it deals, um, and and see what you get and and see what you can turn that into. 
Um, just because you're, you're going to need production. And I think when you have more veterans, it gives you more options with what to do, um, you know, with some of those prospects. And if you, if you get so lucky that you have guys who look like they're blocked by a veteran, mm-hmm. well, if you spend five, six, seven million dollars, you can probably get rid of that veteran fairly easily to open up a spot for the prospect. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't worry about guys getting blocked because you're really only talking about a two, three, four month proposition anyway. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think Contreras is, is, a, is a good example of a guy who, if the, if he lives up to what the pirates want him to be, he's not going to be here till June anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he's not going to be coming up and, and starting the season in the big leagues and burning that super two status. Um, you know, he's going to be down at AAA until at least June. And then, you know what, at that point, you're only a few weeks away from the trade deadline. So, um, I, I think it would be a great problem for the Pirates to have if they had two or three veteran pitchers that they brought in who were all pitching well, um, mm-hmm. but who were also blocking prospects that you want to bring up. Um, that would be an embarrassment of riches. And, and, and if I was the Pirates, that would get me excited about the options that I would have in so many different directions. So um, I, I think I'm definitely looking at pitching as well. And you could say the same thing about the bullpen. Um, you know, people are always looking for relievers um, and, you know, I think we saw with Richard Rodriguez this year, he, I don't even think he made the, the Braves roster for one of those playoff series. And so, um, you know, if you can take a fungible reliever and turn him into a prospect for a million or 2 million bucks, that's great if you're the Pirates. So, um, yeah, I would be aggressive if I was Ben Charing this, Charrington this offseason um, in terms of, of spending the capital he does have to, to possibly, um, you know, burnish the system later. Yeah, and I and one thing you have to look at too is a lot of teams I think are going to be focused on that you know those three shortstops or all the shortstop uh, people, and then there's a lot of good pitching there too. Carlos Rodon, um, Kevin Gausman. There's a lot of good pitching there. The Pirates aren't going to go after just because those guys are going to either stay with their team or want to go to a contender. But that's where I think Ben Sherrington is going to do his best work. He's going to go find those guys that maybe one or two teams is talking to or no, not even talking to at all and say, hey, come play for Pittsburgh for two years and whatever clip amount of money that he gives them. And over this past week, I have talked about some guys the Pirates could be looking forward to and like bringing in and stuff. And one of the, like a couple of the names I threw out there were like Martin Perez from the Boston Red Sox, Mike Fulton from the Texas Rangers, some guys like that that are like not like ancient. They're like 30, 31. Um, cause I don't want to see them go out there and sign like a 36 year old, like Trevor Cahill. I think he was like 35. I don't want to see them go do that. Sign guys that are like in their late twenties, early thirties. That way, if you are trading them away, eventually they at least still have some upside to show to a team. Andrew Heaney was another guy that I threw in there as well. Of course, he already got traded from the angels to the Yankees and who knows what the Yankees will do with him. Maybe they re-sign him or not, but it's never a bad thing when you're a team like the Pirates are right now. And I've said that I, it's so weird to say this because it kind of sounds demeaning, but one's man, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Like, and that's kind of how the Pirates have to look at it right now. It's also kind of a play on words being the Pirates is look at Tyler Anderson. Nobody wanted him, and the Pirates said, okay, we're going to give you a deal. We're going to let you pitch. You're going to be like the starting pitcher and everything. You're going to be one of the best pitchers on the staff. And they traded him away and for what they were supposed to. And if they would have kept him, it would have been a mistake. But the Pirates, I think one thing I've learned from Ben Sherrington, especially doing research on his last stints as a general manager at other places, he's a very patient guy, but he's not scared to be aggressive. Like he will be patient, but he's very much not afraid to splash some cash around even in a small market, because I remember at the time when Boston won the world series in 2014 or 2013, whatever year it was, I think it was 2014. um, That team was not supposed to make the playoffs and that team was not supposed to spend money at all. And he barely spent money and you never know. I mean, you make the right moves. Baseball is a weird sport. (laughs) You probably know that better than me. Baseball is a very weird sport considering the Atlanta Braves are up three, two on the Dodgers without their best player. So you never know. Maybe the Pirates make the right moves. Maybe they don't. Um, but realistically, as I think it begins to unfold, Adam, you have to say, is this team going to be better in 2022 than it was in 2021? I think you have to say yes, just based on if they add anything at all. 
Yeah, and I, I think we've talked about it. I think it's reasonable to have the expectation that they look better. And that, you know, better does not mean playoffs. Better does not even necessarily mean 500, but it means a step up from this, mm-hmm. um, you know, 100, 100 loss, um, you know, crap that we saw this season. And, you know, I, I think you're right. He, he, he's going to have the budget to do some things. We're talking about, you know, without any deals, a payroll that's, that's probably in the 20 to $30 million range. And, um, that's embarrassingly low for, for, for yes. modern baseball standards. So I think, um, you know, he, he should, he better, you know, he better have the freedom for, from ownership to um, use some of this year's resources toward um, a making the team watchable um, at least for a couple of months and, and B toward, you know, ultimately improving the system. And I think that's how they look at it is, um, you know, we can, we can take this, because the, the the draft is capped in terms of what you can spend, um, mm-hmm. because the Pirates spent so much there, um, the only way to kind of game that system, again, is to spend the money in free agency and then filter it, hopefully, into um, some impact prospects or, or, you know, at least C-level guys that have um, a fair amount of upside to maybe become great players someday. So, um, you know, that's, that, that's a move that I don't know if you've ever played out-of-the-park baseball, the... Uh, yep. The management sim but that's that's a move i do every year with my excess money is you know I, I try to get i try to sign the guys who i have under my budget and then i try to trade them at the deadline for um more prospects that, that end up being the foundation of my team and um you know i think ben charrington's in a situation where he can do that and i, I think he'd be wise to oh yeah and i think we can all agree we need a payroll at least above 50 million dollars going into this year I, I I will accept nothing less, like at least 50. And that's even super low too. Um, but Adam, of course, you already know over the next couple of weeks, over the next couple of months, hopefully everything we just said, hopefully Ben Charrington's listening and maybe he does go out there and spend the money. Hopefully Bob Nutting gives him the green light to do so. Um, but Adam, tell the fine people here at Locked on Pirates, all the fans here where they can listen to you, right? Uh, what, not, what am I saying? Listen to you and read what you write. I was like, that was so stuck in my head. I was like, I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to say. Well, you can listen to me here sometimes. Um, I also yeah, appear on the the, Nor- the North Shore Drive uh, mm-hmm. uh, Post Gazette podcasts from time to time. In terms of of writing, um, post gazettecom is is you know where you need to be. Um, we've had a ton of content this week for 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 both football and um, the Penguins who are back in action. Mm-hmm. So. Um, check out all of that. Obviously, you guys are here to listen about baseball, so make sure to follow Jason Mackey, Mike Persak. Um, you know, we're kind of in a dead period right now with 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 the World Series going on in terms of Pirates news, but um, you know, we're probably only a week, week and a half away from um, mm-hmm. you know getting into the off season, and, and things will start to happen. So you're going to want to keep an eye on those guys um, at, at postsafegazette.com. And as always, please consider subscribing um, because you help us do the journalism that we love to do every day. So uh, we'd really appreciate that if you got on board. Oh, yeah, of course. And you guys can obviously follow me on Twitter at MVP underscore Ethan. You can follow Adam on Twitter at Fujimaster24. You can listen to this podcast on YouTube. You can watch me and Adam talk face-to-face on YouTube. Or you can listen on Odyssey, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure that you subscribe, download, and leave a good review and like on all of these videos. I really appreciate it so much. And as Adam said, the World Series and all that stuff is coming up pretty soon so make sure you go check out our pal sully over at locked on mlb he has everything you need to know about the dodgers Braves, astros and red Sox heading into the last couple days of the championship series heading into the world series but until then guys i will see you on monday have a wonderful weekend adam and locked on pirates family and i will see you on the flip side